Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast is a Christ-centered podcast established in 2019 and hosted weekly by Pastor Chris Busher, addressing a host of topics such as the Great Commission, Christian discipleship, and often featuring interviews with special guests who are experts in their field. The views and events expressed on this podcast and all related materials belong solely to their author and not necessarily to the author's employer, organization, committee, or other group or individual. While all attempts are made to present accurate information, some information may become outdated over time. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast makes every attempt to timely update any and all such information. Without further delay, here's another powerful episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Welcome back to another episode of Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. Once again, I am your host here, Dallas Montague. Today we have two guests joining us today, Dr. Elizabeth and Dr. Latonia. How are both of you today? Great. Right. Excellent. Where are, you, where are you calling us from today? Uh, we're from Canton, Georgia. From Georgia. Okay. Did you both live in Georgia your entire life? No. No. We um, moved down here with our family um, about eight or nine years ago. We came from Minnesota. So from our Minnesota. dad is in the mil- was in the military, so we traveled a lot. So the last place we came from was um, Minnesota for 13 years. All right. Well, it's such a pleasure to have you guys here today and speak with our audience about your shop. We're going to talk a little bit more about that. But first, I want to give both of you the opportunity to just tell us who you are. Elizabeth, you can go first. Thank you. Okay. Um, so my name is Elizabeth Rainwater um, and Latanya is my sister. Um, we both grew up in um, a family that always took us to church. And so... Um, and always going to church and stuff. We got saved at a young age. Um, our parents parents um, made sure that we got baptized. Um, but for me, um, when we were going to church, um, we never really heard about the Holy Spirit. So we didn't hear about the Holy Spirit until we moved to Minnesota. So um, that was a life-changing thing for us because when we went to church, in, in Minnesota, then I, that's when I really felt like my relationship with God started to unfold because I didn't have the Holy Spirit and I didn't know what the need of it was. And I'm, I'm seeing all these great things happen. And then I just realized that something's missing. So when um, God blessed me to receive the Holy Spirit, then, you know, I just felt whole. Um, but, you know, I didn't feel like even though I had um, got saved at a young age, like I had a relationship till I got a little bit older and, um, you know, started going to church, getting involved and um, just taking on different roles. And then, you know, later on, as I got older, um, finding out what my calling was in God and chasing after that. Um, So. And that's what I continue to do now is chase after what God has for me to do. And, you know, I'm involved with kids and um, just going out here ministering to people. And so it's just been a big blessing for me. Wonderful. And when you said that it was without the Holy Spirit, can you tell us a little bit more? What did that mean? What was that like? Well, for me, for me, um, I was just finding out about the Holy Spirit. And so um, to me, when I first saw, you know, somebody feeling the presence of God, I didn't know what it was. And so I didn't want to go up there and um, and re- receive something that I didn't know about. And so I had to be told what what is the Holy Spirit and why is it so important? And when I felt like, OK, I don't I don't have this important piece of my life. Then it really clicked for me that I'm, I'm going to chase after God for this until I get it. But, you know, God had to speak to my heart about a lot of things, because although I gave my life to Christ at, at a young age, I wasn't in the place where I was supposed to be with him. Mm-hmm. So I was fighting all these different things and stuff. And, you know, I still had, um, you know, as you grow up stuff, you have all these different sins and stuff in your life. And so God was just letting me know that, you know, you need to let all these things go to let me in so that then I can take over with with your life. And 
once I was honest and truthful, God came into my life and he's been there ever since. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Latanya, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Um, it's kind of like what Elizabeth said is that um, we, we grew up um, with uh, parents that took us to church. Uh, my mother's mother, uh, which is our grandmother who had over 18 kids, uh, wow. took them to church and they, uh, a lot of them was clergy. So came from that clergy background. So my mother extended that kind of thing with us as, as we was children and I, as we are adults now. Um, so I just remember my parents taking us to church and um, my dad was in the military. So we would go on a military base and you'll see a lot of chaplains and things like that. And I think during that time, I think just to kind of give a little bit more insight of what Elizabeth was saying of how they didn't really discuss the Holy Spirit, even though it was in the Bible. But when you're that little, you're not really kind of grasping, OK, what what did I just hear? And, yeah, and we're not asking those questions either. Right. We're yeah, not asking. We're, we're not going to ask that. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. So we understood enough, but not that part. For some reason, when I look back, I never recall hearing about the Holy Spirit, even though it was in the Bible. It wasn't something the preacher talked about. And I think there was Baptist, if I recall that as a child, I think there was Baptist during that time. Mm -hmm. And it just wasn't something that was said. And, you, you know, um, our, we, we gave our lives to Christ. I remember um, doing that. And willingly, it was something I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. uh, I just had a desire for to get to know God and wanted to um, just um, be saved. Um, my parents, um, during that time, it was kind of funny because, like I said, didn't know about the Holy Spirit. And they did not really want to baptize kids that young mm -hmm. either. So my parents had to fight for us to be baptized at such a young age. Um, and as, as we got a little bit older, I think I was in high school and, um, I went to this church, um, our family went to this church, um, I think it was Pentecostal, I think. Mm -hmm. And that's when we realized that they was talking about the, the Holy Spirit was always mentioned in the Bible, mm -hmm. but we never heard anybody talk about it. So we started asking more questions about it to the pastor and everything and realizing that piece was missing. You know, mm -hmm. you got saved and, you know, as life goes on, you know, you're learning more about God more than you did as a child. And uh, building that relationship, um, getting more into your prayer life, um, you know, being a part of the church and activities and things like that, which we was in music and everything else. Um, but we, I received um, first um, the pastor had talked about the Holy Spirit, but I did not see it up close and personal until we went to this church. Our church went to another church for a revival. Um, I think it was New Year's Eve mm -hmm. revival, and we worshiped all the way up until New, Year New Year's Day. And so the Holy Spirit broke out in there. We was like, what is that? And um, that's how we saw that up close and personal. And it just kept you, you know, when you see something like that and you see God moving and everything, you like, I want to know more about it. And that's mm -hmm. what happened. Mm -hmm. Wanted to know more about it. And me and my dad went up there to the altar and received the Holy Spirit that very day. Um, later on would be my sister and mother. Um, but yeah, that's that's how we kind of got introduced in, into that because there was a lot of pieces missing for mm -hmm. some reason. Um, yeah. But uh, what what else did you ask? I understand what you're saying because I didn't understand about the spiritual warfare until I was about 18 years old either, you know, and I gave my life to the Lord around 12. I still lived a life in the world for several years, but I didn't understand spiritual warfare until later in my life. And so I understand what you're saying. It is all the pieces come together as we, we progress in our faith with the Lord. And for both of you, how did becoming a Christian at such a young age save you from other things from the world, maybe that you, your friends were involved with or people around you were involved with? You want to start? Okay. So for, for me, I've seen a lot of things. I've seen um, some friends selling drugs. I've seen friends pregnant. Uh, all the above. It wasn't that I was exempt from seeing all of that. Mm -hmm. And even though I was saved at such a young age, um, I just... 
I, I would read the Bible at such a young age and have a, a, a grasp of a, a a uh, certain amount of understanding about what I was reading. And I just knew what not to do. <laughs> you know, if that makes a little bit mm, of sense yeah, of what not sense. to get into. And unfortunately that didn't exempt me from seeing it or people being around me in, mm -hmm. in those things. And I think what kept me from that is a lot of praying, a lot of praying, going to church and just surrounding myself around the word of God. And because the environment, school environments was terrible. Yeah. Um, but at the but at the same time, it was funny. I didn't never end up into any of those things, drinking or anything, even though those people did that around me. Um, I actually became that positive role model for them. They wouldn't, you, you know, they if they was into that, they wasn't into it after, you know, encountering me. You know, people would ask for advice. Um, they just would change and being around me because they knew I was saved and what I stood for. So it, it wasn't that difficult of a process for me growing yeah. up in school. Um, but Elizabeth, she would um, have to share hers. Well, for me, when I was going to school, um, after I got, after I had formed my relationship with God, Everything kind of changed for me because even when I was little, I never wanted to get in trouble. Mm -hmm. And so I, I would always separate myself from anything that had to do with some trouble. If anybody was fighting and I was over there telling somebody so that it could be broken up. And as I got older and got into um, like high school, I started noticing all these things going on around me from the teen pregnancy to the drugs and bringing mm -hmm. weapons and stuff in the school. And I wanted to be away from it as far as possible. And, you know, I, I was one of those types of kids that, you know, once my parents started taking us to church and stuff, when we're growing up in there, I always had my Bible with me. So I bring my Bible with me since I was little all the way up to high school and stuff and college with me. And so I was praying before I went in school, while I was in school, and and you know because I just felt unsafe. Mm -hmm. and, we we know, need more of that. We need more carrying the Bible, praying before school, after school, before yeah. work, after work, through work. Yes. Oh yeah, we need yes. it. I, I mean, I was really terrified when I went in school, and um, I just didn't want to get in any any form of trouble, and I just wanted my relationship to stay intact with God, mm -hmm. and so you know. A lot of the people that I was um, friends with, I wasn't friends with them later on because, you know, they looked and if they saw like God's presence would be over me very so strong in school and I wouldn't understand why. But um, and I just be praying and stuff and people be asking, you know, what's wrong with you? And mm -hmm. I say, well, it's God's presence. And they're like, oh, well, I hope you get better. <laughs> and I'm like, this is a great thing here that, that's happening. I hope that you get the Holy Spirit and you have a relationship with God. But, you know, the, the troubles that, that was at school, I just felt like it needed to be covered in prayer and I needed to be far away from it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just thank God that I never got in the trouble that I could have got in because, you know, we're living down here on this earth in, in the flesh and it's, and it can be hard. Um, so I just always pray to God that he blessed me to go into school, get out of it and accomplish what he has for me. Yeah. <clears throat> Excellent. Well, thank you both so much for sharing your story. I feel that like we know you a little bit better now than we did before. And this leads us into the next topic of your shop. So can I just have one of you tell us a little bit more about ELR Shop? What is this? What is your purpose behind this? You're listening to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. We'll be right back after this quick word from our sponsors. When Fiona moved to China, it was to begin an exciting life with her precious loving husband. But then the pandemic hit. The whole world came to a halt, sick with plague and anguish. As COVID-19 stormed the planet, affecting millions, they found themselves in a horrible situation. With no airflow, they were stranded in China while their family and loved ones were back in the U.S. Fiona's grandmother had fallen ill and she was getting worse. Fiona found comfort when exchanging letters with her grandmother. Find your copy of Letters of Comfort on Amazon today to hear the letters that Fiona exchanged with her grandmother. Are you interested in becoming a holistic healer? 
like a health coach, a naturopath, an herbalist, or a nutritionist, but don't have the time or money for college? The Aruka Holistic Life Academy offers a dual certification program in naturopathic herbalism and holistic life coaching with an emphasis in online business and marketing. Become the healer of your home and your community and build a profitable online health coaching business. Visit www.aruka.com. That is A-R-U-K-A-H dot com. And this leads us into the next topic of your shop. So can I just have one of you tell us a little bit more about ELR shop? What is this? What is your purpose behind this? So the ELR shop is basically our names, Elizabeth Latanya Rainworth. So that's what ELR ah, I did not make that connection. Now I got it. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so um, it, so how this shop became about is we were ESL teachers for the country of China. Wow. And we taught kids from ages four and up. Mm -hmm. how to read and write. And so um, in working for this center, um, a Florida center online uh, for Chinese students um, to learn English, um, we began to look at our students and see what was wrong with the curriculum that the center had us teach. Mm -hmm. And uh, we realized it did not work on all or most of our a majority of our students. So we started to um draft our own kind of curriculum a little bit to um, help the student learn more. And uh, we found that that worked a lot better. And then we started building things, um, to, um, things of how to teach kids how to read, um, how to um, do phonics, um, all kinds of things, grammar. And so some of that stuff is already in our store, but some of it we're still getting ready to put out. Mm -hmm. And we customize these things. We went to school uh, for um, psychology teaching and uh, one of our degrees, and that meant we built courses. So that's how we got a little bit of that background of how to build things. And then we international training of how to work with these kids and then also work with them as adults in business. And wow. so, um, and, and doing these things, when the center went away because of the China regulations, um, they didn't want uh, people that don't live in a country to teach their students online anymore. So that went away in March of this year. And so we had already been building. And so we put that up as a part of our store being inspirational, uh, you know, as Christian women and also educational because we have a passion for it. We have over five degrees and, and more and all kinds of other things, but we have a very strong passion for educating people and seeing them be the best that they can be out here. Um, we also did a lot of mentoring. So we love kids and our ministry has always been kids. Mm -hmm. and praying for them and um, encouraging those that still going to school. Um, and so that's how this shop became about in um, building the things that we, we built. But our purpose of that shop is, is to educate people and inspire them. Mm -hmm. um, and those things, and anybody that buys anything out of that store, even the simplest thing as a coloring book, we like to bring joy to little kids. Mm -hmm. uh, we have been told that those who have bought certain coloring books, they use it for a, a domestic shelter where kids mm -hmm. and women have been beaten. So just mm -hmm. to uh, bring joy to our heart that, you know, even though they're in that situation, something of ours had um, bought joy to the little kids. Just the simplest mm -hmm. thing is a coloring book. And some of those coloring books have uh, a lot of uh, meanings to them. There's a, um, um, a drug mm -hmm. and um, um, self, self esteem or something like that coloring book in there that's mm -hmm. still educating them not to, you know, as little as they is not to take drugs of any kind and, you know, to build your self esteem and all kinds of things, just trying to incorporate positive messages, even if it's a simple coloring book. Mm -hmm. uh, but the proceeds, any proceeds 
uh, anything that anybody buys out of that store, it goes towards mission work that we do out here. Mm -hmm. We give back, we take that money and we give back going out to whether it's international, local or national out here as chaplains and reverends. Um, we go out here, we either feed people, uh, minister to them, pray with them, all kinds of things. Mm -hmm. um, we try to give back, you know, um, because we believe in that, um, mm -hmm. you know, giving back to people and uplifting people. So that's where everything goes, and that's why we built that shop. Yeah, thank you. Elizabeth, do you have anything to add about that part? Um, well, um, also for, for, um, for the shop, um, we, wanted to, we wanted to also um, make sure that we incorporate um, our beliefs and mm -hmm. stuff. So we um, branched off and started um, – sharing about ourselves and our journey and um just doing that on social media because we noticed that um there's a lot of young people on social media mm -hmm. and you know um we got into teaching bible study over um instagram i think about a year or so ago and um because we met a young lady from pakistan mm -hmm. um so we were teaching this big group of kids um over the internet and it was just a, um, an amazing thing because, you know, not every day does um, parents give you access to actually minister to their kids or, mm -hmm. or anything really like that. And it was just amazing. Um, and we looked at that and we said that, you know, we can make this even bigger and, mm -hmm. you know, be able to do great things and stuff. You know, um, my sister and I, when we were working at the time for um, um, teaching in China, we were also teaching Bible study to the kids in Pakistan and we were looking at their needs and sometimes they didn't have anything to eat or shoes and stuff. And, you know, we just felt moved to see how we could provide for that. And so um, my sister and I, we got together with our family and stuff and we just started just giving because we didn't want to mm -hmm. see anybody without. And that's what we want to continue doing out here. Um, we recently, um, had got into um, doing a lot of missions because we we're doing a lot of a lot of other ministries and things, and so we were getting into uh, missions and going out. And it's just amazing uh, what you can do in the community to be positive. Mm -hmm. And so that's really what we want to bring to our shop, and we want to bring to people out outside of um, um, in the international realm and out here in the. Um, local areas we want to go out here and we want to spread joy to people and let them know that you know god can help you and and that there are also other people out here that want to help you and be a positive role model you know when we were growing up i didn't have too many positive role models um so just god touching us and blessing us to be positive role models in addition to our other brothers and sisters out here in christ it's just a blessing to us to see it. So we just want to be that that light out here. And so we wanted to provide all kinds of things and opportunities and stuff for people um, that we didn't have. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. Just like uh, Elizabeth said, is that um, we are getting more out here. We're about to get more into the school system because mm -hmm. it is it's terrible mm -hmm. with these young kids of, you know, these shootings and everything. And we're getting ready to evangelize to the local school system mm -hmm. around here and um, partnering with the state and that mm -hmm. and, you know, just trying to reach as many kids as as we can you know, out here and adults. Mm -hmm. Incredible. Thank you guys for sharing that. A little bit about the prices that you charge on Etsy. Like what are some of the, the ranges that you're talking about? I would say that for, for us, we didn't want to make anything that was extremely too high where somebody could not purchase anything. Mm -hmm. um, some, uh, everything is like digital download. So, um, People can download it and use it whatever way they want to. If they want to download the coloring books or um, maybe a wall art or something, that you can use these prints in any way that you want to. Like um, a customer had took the printing and they put the design on a pillow and stuff. So mm -hmm. you can do whatever you want with them. Um, 
And so for us, we start like, I think either three or five dollars. And I think the um, the highest is like um, 25, 20, 25, I think. And the reason why you'll see look something that's the highest is 25, nothing above yeah, that. Nothing above if that. you see anything like 25 or 16 dollars, um, especially with the educational um, things that we built, um, it's because um, there's two different ways that you can use that. You can mm -hmm. use it online and mm -hmm. fill in your answers or, or for those that don't really want to print or anything. And then there's another version of it uh, where you can print it out page by page mm -hmm. or you can bind it. So we're giving a couple. So it's not just one thing that's in that um, yeah. Um, product. It's a couple things that that's why it's that much. Yeah, for that for that one specifically for it's a it's like a grammar book. So that's the highest one in there. But other than that, everything is just um wanted to keep everything manageable where people didn't think that it was something that's so big that they couldn't buy it or anything. And we also run monthly sales. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you both so much for sharing this and the positivity that you're sharing in your neighborhood, in your local community and overseas as well. Actually, I'm in Brazil as a missionary right now. One of the ways that I support my family is through teaching English ESL. And so I have a little bit of understanding of the things that you're saying here today, more than our audience might. There might be some out there who understand as well, but I have a firsthand understanding of what you're talking about, creating the <laughs> course content and all of this. It's incredible. I'm, I'm very excited about what you guys are doing and I hope people check it out. So can we just tell our audience, how can we find your site? So if um, we have a lot of, so I think we have over six social medias out mm -hmm. there, um, which is um, TikTok, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Pinterest, mm -hmm. YouTube. And so uh, if you go to Etsy itself and you can just type in ELR shop, just mm -hmm. one word together and you'll see us up there. Mm -hmm. And uh, um You'll see our products. And if you stroll down, some of our social medias that we could get on Etsy site is up there. But as you as you go into the social media, like let's say, for instance, if you clicked on Instagram on Etsy on our page for the shop, it'll lead you to what other um, um, social medias we we the, might have. But yeah. the biggest one that will lead you to all the other social medias that we have is YouTube yes. because it's going to show everything every outlet that we're on mm -hmm. on there including the store yeah excellent excellent thank of you thank you so much for joining us today if you could leave our audience both of you can answer this question if you could leave our audience with one overall point what do you think that would be um i think the overall point that i would want to leave with people is to get out here and make a positive difference with the community and people around the world it's important because there, you know when i when i look at the world out here so many people need love and so many people everybody needs jesus and and so if you can make that impact no matter what way that is then get out here and do that and just do the best you can and connect with people and and spread the gospel. Yeah, okay. I, I totally agree with what Elizabeth is saying. We recently went on a mission trip in Fort Payne, Alabama, which people can see on our uh, TikTok or YouTube or Instagram, and they can see that journey up there. But to make that kind of short is that just going into neighborhoods that mm -hmm. never heard about God, or if they did hear about God, they can't get to the local churches, mm -hmm. you know, just meeting people, just simply knocking on their doors and evangelizing to them brings joy to both Elizabeth and I, because that might be the only positive thing that they might have experienced uh, for such a time. Mm -hmm. And, you know, just, you know, that's our passion getting out there, speaking to people, giving them love, you know, the way that God gave us love and gave us life for everybody. You know, that's what we want to do is be positive examples for Christ out here. Again, guys, thank you so much for your time today. All the things that you shared with our audience today, I know they're going to be blessed by our conversation. Can I have one of you end our time together with a prayer? I would really appreciate that. Yes, I, I don't mind praying. 
Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time that you have blessed us all to come together, Lord Jesus, and share our testimony and our story. We thank you for connecting us with Dallas, Lord Jesus, and we thank you for all that you're going to do through all of us and all the rest of your people throughout this world, Lord Jesus. We ask that you touch people, Father God, to go out here and do your work, your work and your will, Father God, and that you would just move in a mighty way, Father God, bring about change and positivity and just touch people's heart, Lord Jesus, to want to spread the gospel and to do your will and to go out here and just be that difference. And we ask that you cover and protect people and anoint them and just bless their footsteps. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 You've just listened to the Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast. With your host, Pastor Chris Busher. Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast was recorded live in studio with final editing made before uploading. Subscribe today to Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast on iTunes or Google Play. For more fantastic daily content, visit Pastor Chris Busher online via Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. Don't miss the next episode on Faith and Family Fellowship Podcast.